News Radio 700 WLW. This uh, concert that happened down in Houston, this eight people died. It, it sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? it sounds very Unfortunately, familiar. Unfortunately, very yeah. familiar to uh, we here in the uh, tri-state area. Of course, so of the Who concert. I, mean, I saw some of the videos. I mean, it was like a just like a chain link fence, the, yeah. the one I saw, and people were just push, 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 and all of a sudden just thousands of people were rolling. But it's crazy. It's all kinds of weird circumstances happening. People talking about someone in the crowd may have been injecting people with drugs. I during saw life. that too. That's what? bizarre. Very bizarre how this yeah. goes on. And uh, all I know is the lawyers are getting involved, and it's a big mess. And here to discuss our good friend Robert Crane. Rob, uh, welcome back to the program. So in your, down in the uh, Texas uh, area, what uh, what have you heard so far about all the ins and outs of this thing? Because as Rock was saying, different things are leaking out, and you hear all the rumors. Somebody was in, supposedly injecting people with stuff. It's crazy. Well, guys, good to hear your voices again. I'm glad to be on your show, and, and you're right. Um, this and a strangely familiar to our last conversation about the about movie with the, Alec Baldwin. The Baldwin we keep thing, getting yeah. Information, yeah. We keep getting information leaking out. And I've seen conflicting reports as to your last comments about the uh, person being injected, actually a security guard with right. rumor had been injected with a, a needle. But that is being uh, rebutted by people who were there saying that wasn't the case. But, you know, again, we're just getting pieces of information now. Um, what is clear is that this is um, an event that was staged as um, like similar events for this particular musician, Travis Scott, um, and he's got he's got two convictions um, right. for misdemeanor convictions for incidents happening, uh, one in Arkansas um, and another one. Um, uh, I can't remember the other one was. And then he's also got a suit from New York City from an incident that happened in 2017 that left a a, a fan uh, paralyzed, so he'll be in a wheelchair the rest of his life. So there's lots of information coming out, and we're going to continue to get more and more of this. Now, I'm reading th- in a bunch of different things, obviously trying to find out exactly what's going on. But I, I guess this was a concert that was it was canceled last year, right, because of COVID. COVID yeah. So now it's hotly anticipated. What are you hearing in terms of, you know, what, was there enough security? Was all the, all those sort of things that you initially think about in certain like this? What what are you hearing? Well, what you're hearing from the city officials is a lot of defense, and what they're saying so far is, look, we had more security here than we had for the Super Bowl or the world, actually the World Series. Um, and that may be true, but the, the difference here is the staging and the environment that you have. When you're in a baseball park, everybody's got a ticket, everybody's got a seat, everybody's got their place. Um, what you've got here is you've got a standing room only set up, you know, with no seats or aisles, and you've just got a glob of people um, that you cannot control. And that, you know, as you listen to crowd management experts, they'll tell you that is, you know, the most dangerous type of staging you can have um, in you know, venues and, and concerts and events like this one. Um, you know, people were talking about how this had been chaotic um, all day long. They were talking about how, you know, this was, you know, this was the big event at the end of the first night of this two-day festival, um, and they were already getting um, uncomfortable. And, you know, what's striking about these events and, and what happened in the Who concert back in 79 that you all referenced. Sure, it, absolutely. This, Chaos started 40 minutes um, before the end of this show. They let this show go on purposely. The police chief um, and and authorities in Houston let this go on because the last thing they said they wanted to do was end it abruptly and create potentially another riot. Same thing happened at that Who concert in 79. These were people rushing in to get into the arena um, in 1979, and I think 11 people were killed, yep. and they didn't tell any of the concert goers. They let the concert continue because they didn't want to have another riot happen. So, just you know, just you know, incredible um, factual scenarios happening um, with these events, and it's it's something we need to learn from. And Rob, but in this case, it seems to me that people knew there were people down on the floor. I, you know, the powers that be, and even maybe even the artists knew that there were people down on the floor and nobody stopped the show. I mean, is is that correct to your knowledge? 
Yeah, there's video out there of people climbing up on their own stage and begging for help and telling them to yeah. stop the show, um, that what's going on down there. What What is unclear is to what extent the musicians on stage uh, knew about the severity um, of what was happening. Remember, they're used to this. They promote this type of high-energy crowd. Oh, yeah. And so we don't really know yet whether they knew, that in fact, there were deaths out there or serious injuries. They noted uh, there was an ambulance in the crowd. The uh, the musician did note the you know the ambulances that was out there in the crowd, um, and he claims he didn't know about any of the deaths or major injuries until after he was off stage. But you know, those are things we're going to learn more and more about in the days to come. So I mean, I know he has a history of, I guess, what inciting violence at a concert. Like, how do you? I mean, did he say anything that people could? in a court of law say okay he was he's the one that caused this because everyone's blaming everybody it wasn't my fault it was that guy's fault right. that's what's of course going on right now so is there anything to your knowledge that he did that you could objectively say okay he was trying to really ramp this crowd up and it got out of control and that's why this happened you know and, and i'd be careful too I, I haven't seen anything where he and his past history has indicated inciting violence mm -hmm. what he has done is he has encouraged you know, people to climb over security barricades and get up onto the stage, you know, for a high energy mm -hmm. um, event. Um, and so, you know, as far as this particular event, um, I haven't seen yet where, I've, you know, there has been direction on his part uh, to, you know, take actions and steps beyond the safety measures that are there. But um, you, I can I can promise you um, it will be looked at um, under a microscope and to the extent, you know, every word he said has been recorded and everything will be reviewed tightly because, you know, you've got, you know, you've got the musicians and the first lawsuits in Houston, um, the defendants who have been sued are, are Travis Scott, uh, the musician Drake, um, yeah. who I assume also performed or was performing at the uh, Astroworld event. Live Nation, obviously one of our nation's uh, largest concert promoters and providers, as well as, as well as the Harris County, that's where Houston is, Harris County Sports and Convention Corporation. So everybody is going to be brought in um, to an analysis on this and looking at um, not only what the musician's conduct was, but the preparation for this, knowing the past history of these kinds of events, and how it is we just let the standing room only crowd you know do what they were going to do we know what happens when there's high energy alcohol you, you know we, we better learn some lessons rob crane is our guest and as a personal injury uh, attorney rob where where does it start i mean this who do you how many how many possible plaintiffs are there in this thing well, I mean, a good question. That's a very good question. You've got, you know, eight um, who have confirmed that have died. We've had notes of many others seriously injured, in, including 25, you know, in some reports taken to the hospital, 300 people treated on site at a field hospital there. Um, my, my, There's going to be hundreds of people, is my suspicions, filing claims and or lawsuits here. It's just getting started. So, I mean, one of the things that was that came out of the, the WHO concert disaster uh, and back in 79 was you could no longer have festival seating in an arena so, so i guess I, I guess because it's outdoor is that the way you, you get around this sort of thing and i guess the reason why this maybe still happens yeah good question um that is a very good question and one that you know we need to look at um you know, a couple of these different incidents um involving mr scott included outdoor venues um that have you know very similar elements to them so you know, why those safety measures are not in place here is something, you know, that needs to be looked at. And and I do want to make note, too, I mean, this is, you know, one of the, the eight people um, who died in this terrible event is a, a senior from the University of Dayton. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I just want to pass along our condolences to those in Ohio that um, are, are suffering from this. But, uh, you know, as, as to your point, you know, these outdoor venues, they're just as dangerous as an indoor venue. You should be, still be having the same kind of safety measures. All right, Rob. Hey, listen, thanks so much. Anytime, guys.